Hello, everybody, and welcome to 2014. It's an exciting year uh, for us and for you, hopefully. <laughs> and we're going to unbox some Forgotten Fellowship because it seems to be an awesome pack. And hopefully. it came out last month. And it came out last month. <laughs> last year, some would say. Yeah, last year. A year ago, this thing came out. So we thought we'd get around to checking this out. And uh, having played with a few of these cards, I've, I've seen a few floating around. I actually, I think I snuck one of the packs earlier. And You've actually, been sneaking? I have some of my, <laughs> I have some of the new event. Uh-oh, confession. Yeah, so, <laughs> oops. Um, and something else you guys should be aware of is we're, we're all basically just like completely hammered by the flu or something. Uh, so if I'm... Is this half the table? Well, yeah, if I'm coughing especially, sorry about that, but it's going to happen. Zach, you're, you're we'll try a not bit to spray coffee. It. Yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> cough. Okay. I, I thought you were getting one <coughs> ready there, still. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's kick it off with the Brightwater Man at Arms. Two cost bannerman from House Florent. Four strength, military power, with deadly. Does not kneel to attack or defend. Oh, God. oh my goodness. <laughs> at the end of the dominance phase, discard him from play. At the end of the dominance phase, discard him from play. At all the right, end so, of the dominance phase. Uh, my initial thoughts about this guy are that he is phenomenal. And <laughs> um, <laughs> he's got, he's just. He's a Bannerman, so that's good for, for the Bannerman guy that came out for Baratheon. He doesn't have any negative traits. He's huge strength to cost ratio, similar to Mercenaries from Pike for Greyjoy. He's got Deadly. He doesn't kneel to attack or defend. He still gets you four strength for dominance. Then he gets discarded. You can bring him back with Mel Schemes. The list goes on. I think he's, I think he's really, really good. Ten out of Great ten. Great setup. I mean, yeah, yeah really non, non-unique. Yeah. I mean... The only thing better than standing is not kneeling <clears throat> yeah. uh, on a card. So the not kneeling either direction as well is is so worth it, especially out of a house that loves to play from the discard pile. I what think a package. I'm just, I'm really shocked that he has a keyword in all honesty. What a package. Like, I, would, I would think that everything that he has without the keyword would be tip top. But with the keyword, it yeah. is undisputedly one of the best cards I've seen in some time. Two Especially for a uh, Two is a deadly man. Yeah, that's, oh, just unbelievable. That, there's a word for that, bananas, <clears throat> and it is that. Here's, and obviously he plays right into the two cost uh, Baratheon agenda, getting renown. Um, you know, I saw, I've seen him a bit on like early setup stuff, and I get it. You're gonna set him up if you have him, but I really like holding him in hand too. Yeah. I love the idea of just holding at least one of these as you see them. Just hold them, hold them, hold them, mm -hmm. and then whenever it's time, you know, let's say they have valor or something, you just pop two of these guys out, and it's like the game is yours. You're you're getting two challenges, non-standing, deadly with renown. It's like, what are you gonna do about that for four gold? Probably no lose. way. Yeah, no way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's like. It, it's definitely it's not great. the most mind-blowing character ever, but it is really fantastic. It will see play. And it's I, great. I think it feels very Baratheon-y. Mm -hmm. Baratheon-y. Yeah. It's just like, this is, I like this. I like this. It's good, though. It's good card. No doubt about it. It's really good. No doubt. All right. Uh, next up, we have <laughs> Force March. It is a House Baratheon-only event, and it reads, Any phase, stand any number of characters with combined printed cost three or lower. It just keeps getting better for these guys. Uh... I don't know what to say here. I mean, we've we've ha had numerous discussions about how standing effects are better than kneeling effects, and how these are the types of things that win you games more than kneeling effects. Mm -hmm. uh, um, this is fantastic. I, I don't know what else you have to say about this. It's a straight up stand. I mean, <clears throat> maybe you go, you could go like refugees as you're restricted in the, in one of these Brathian decks coming out of the line, really aggro-y kind of Brathian thing. Yeah. You could go crazy maester abuse with this, I'm sure. I mean, you've already got King Robert's hammer and uh, and uh, the coat. What's the uh, what's the other stand you stand the stealth guy? You all know oh, it. Massey's Hook. Massey's Hook. Massey's Hook. Yeah, Massey's Hook. Yeah, Massey's Hook. Maria. Spongebob's and there's Maria. Oh, good you stuff. Maria is Maria one cost? I think she's I think so. she's one or two. But like standing her and maybe a bright. Uh, you don't even need to stand Brightwater. I was looking at him and yeah, it's like, yeah, he's not gonna kneel. Heaven I mean, forbid somebody kneels. Okay, you can. Any, stand. Anytime you can stand characters is great. A card for a stand is great. The fact that you can stand any number. Up to three cost or lower is phenomenal. People already play Disney Mastery quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is just a better version of that yeah. most of the time. Yeah. I, I do want to note something that may be more interesting because we all know stand is good. This is going to get used, and there's a million ways to abuse standing. Uh, is actually using it against your opponent. So I'm picturing like a Valor to Hear Us. Mm. Where yeah, there it is. Standing their characters, uh, and then I like it. They're gone. I think that's the kind of the intent. Forced march seems to make sense. Like it's supposed to be kind of a negative thing you're doing to your opponent. 
So a lot of a lot of really good use here. Even if you're doing like a Valid O'Hara's theme, you've got the option to kill their dudes with it. You got yeah. the option to stand yours with it. Surprise stand and after they declared a challenge could be huge. Um, winning a challenge on defense. This game's standing. all about options. Standing. Yes. Yeah. I think I think big. it's such a big card. Just any a, phase too. a good option. Yeah. yeah. Like any phase really. <laughs> really, really. It's a great option. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well done. One hundred percent. Well done, Baratheons. You guys made out like bandits. bandits. They got yeah. two cards, but they were both <laughs> phenomenal. You guys. <clears throat> Up next, we have a Greyjoy card. Oh, awful. It is a four-cost unique character named Asha Greyjoy. Never she's a lady in an Ironborn. She's three strength. She's a Tricon with naval enhancements in all three. It's fantastic. Oh, she's renowned. She likes turnips. And if any opponent <laughs> has more power on his or her house card than you, she cannot be killed. Wow. Tim, what do you think? I think that this is average. A it's a little bit below, I would say, if you're judging on like the, the awesome scale. Probably won't make it in any decks, right? <clears throat> I, I disagree with that statement. There's only one. I, I think that this will see play, and I think that it, she's completely worth it. Renowned for four cost. Tricon? It's like, okay. Tricon with Naval. I mean, with Naval. And the thing, <clears throat> Naval's the kicker. I mean, my brain goes to Black Sails, you know, but it, do, it, it shouldn't. It doesn't have to, because it plays well with the agenda we're going to get into, which is the old way. And just having three strength for any challenge you want mm -hmm. is insane. It mm -hmm. is. It's like your opponent can't defend and win anything. And Greyjoy already gives them so many bad options there with naval escorts and scouting vessels. That's also assuming you don't have any strength boosters. Yeah, Some exactly. Warning. Iron victory. I mean, it's like, Greyjoy gosh, she just can do got some worse. serious yeah. work and renown mm -hmm. on top of that. So good. And and the note cannot be killed. I was going to say, we don't even, yeah. she, she fits really well in the offensive valor that Greyjoy typically does, um, assuming that you're not winning in power. So and Brotherhood? I mean No negative it's, it's seems like Greyjoy Brotherhood's yeah. totally doable now. Can't die. Well more doable. More doable. Sorry, yeah. doable. <laughs> She's the fantastic. one card is all we needed. Yeah, so another no, great no Asha. <laughs> Man. They're always going to be good. That arc. There's not much more to say about her. She is she's the third one, right? Great. Uh, she's the third one. Yes. We have the one that cannot be saved. Then we have the restricted uh, non neal and then we have this. The one and, cannot be killed. And I think this is a good. I think this is a kind of a nice tone to set for FFG. Is giving us three different Ashes that are all equally good. You have Warcraft Asha, useful in those kinds of situations. Tricon, but can't be saved. Uh, and then you have no no Neely Asha, which can yeah. can totally wreck a board, and then you have this naval Asha who can't be killed and is one cost more. Uh, I, I think it's really it's, solid. It'd it's be important worth it. to note on the Asha uh, note when looking at this card is you have to compare it to the other versions from the. Are you going to use this over the other ones? Yeah, because uh, yeah. as great as this is, is it as good as the restrictive one? If you're not using a restricted card. Yeah, I mean, if if you have a restricted slot open, it's hard not to put. The other Asha, the restricted Asha in because there's so many good memories attached yeah. to it. And she's, and she's at the uh, three cost. She's won me so many games. She's, she's at the three cost slot um, instead of the four. And the four cost slot is always a weird slot. Usually you want, you know, for typical decks, for me, it's like I only want three, four, maybe five characters at four cost at max. Um, and there's good ones here. We have Balin. Um, we have a lot of good four cost that kind of come down right there. So. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's good because it's a choice. Yeah, it's yeah. not a it's not a go to mm -hmm. for sure. But I think it's definitely playable. <laughs> oh, totes playable, yeah, yeah. and yeah. probably the coolest looking Asha we have. Yeah, that's true. Eating her veggies. All right, next up we have a zero cost <laughs> unique Greyjoy uh, location: Pike, Iron Island, Stronghold, no attachments, immune to character, immune to events and character abilities. <laughs> power on Pike counts towards your victory total. Any phase, Neil Pike to move one power from your house card to Pike. I don't know where this theme came from, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> suddenly there was this. Okay. Great so joy, you, brotherhood. You, you can't attach things to it. It's immune to events and character abilities. You can kneel it to move that power from your house to it. Mm hmm. Seems good. Yeah. Seems pretty good. Uh, yeah. For zero cost, especially. For zero cost, I mean, I don't know. It's the, one of those things where I look at it and it's like, I kind of want to find room for one of those in every deck. The, yeah. Run. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? It's like the a power bank. Like, if someone's running city plots... They all are. Mm -hmm. Aren't gone. we all? Or rally cry. First turn. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Like, Every, oh, it's, I'm going to let you keep putting power on that for a while. Yeah, it's risky. Dead. You have to leverage Dead. it in certain ways. Again, fitting right into the Brotherhood theme, though. So it's <laughs> like this weird Greyjoy Brotherhood resurgence is is here. And we'll be we haven't, for it. I haven't seen the deck yet. I haven't made the deck yet. You uh, should make it. But it's there. I mean, at it's the same time, there. though, with your risking it by putting the power on it uh, scenario... 
I feel like, you know, early game, this is interesting because a lot of times, you know, my opponent will give me an unopposed because so I'll have a power and be able to move that power so they can't claim it. Yeah, yep. you may get rid of it, but at least they didn't claim it from you mm -hmm. uh, along yeah. the way. could really slow them down. So it's interesting. It's just a card I can see as being not very useful a chunk of the time. Yeah. In which do you really want to put a card in your deck that has that attached to it? Yeah, I'd be I know, surprised if this was ever a three of in any deck. No. Oh, no, no, no. But maybe a weird House of Dreams Pike thing that does something crazy. I, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Watch for it. We don't think it's going to happen until that Baratheon Holly Hill deck comes out of nowhere and just bang, or like Huntress, you know? It's like, <laughs> I would have never thought yeah. that those things were I amazing. think this is a, a, an interesting enough effect that someday a deck will come along <clears> that really uses it. I'm even picturing that if you're running Brotherhood, putting this no matter what house you're running, as insurance mm. for them being able to get a power onto your house that does happen, by the way. <laughs> Occasionally. Uh, where you can... Not often. Because you, you would be willing to pay two at some yeah, point totally. if you had to to get that power off of your house. And it comes pretty well with Asha, doesn't it? It sure does. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, well, let's move on to the real star of this show. Well, Asha was maybe the real star, but uh, Storming the Shore. Nice. House grade your only event. Any phase, choose and kneel any number of locations with combined printed cost of three or lower. That is uh, amazing art, by the way. We Whew. we were talking about standing characters with the Baratheon one, right? And that is super powerful. For the Greyjoy theme and what Greyjoy does, this is so synergistic. <clears throat> this is actually a linchpin card that kind of melds together some things that the Greyjoys have always supposed to have been good at. Um, but when you when you used to look at like location control in Greyjoy, newly made lord was like, oh Greyjoy's awesome at location control. They have newly made lord, and what pretty else? much it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Cap of the Iron Fleet, and then maybe they have some cancels, but, but it, that's not location. It was generally control, location really. control only via discard effects. Yeah, they had, they had a lot of that, and they had you know they, you have some Victorian reavers that don't really <clears> see play. Um, you have a location that cancels the first. Uh, yeah, river blockade. Yeah. That's a, that's a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a bummer. So it's like, it's not an overwhelming theme, right? As opposed to like, name me all the Baratheon characters with Renown or something. But this, this is single-handedly, is just the greatest card that Greyjoy has gotten, maybe. <laughs> Never will Greyjoy have to complain ever, about man. all three Pentoshi manors being out. Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's so mean because I, I'm it's just crazy. picturing it as a Targ player. Oh, oh man. Um, that's you, where it's you at. You finally have a way to <laughs> like kneel down my influence. That's what I'm picturing too. <laughs> That's what I'm. Picturing. Um, but and I've been experimenting with this. It makes so much sense now. We have Gorold and the Good Brothers to make the Bannerman kneel effects really good. On top of storming the shore, um, and we can start looking at attack from the sea like we have in the past. But it's usually <laughs> been like we have all these warships, so we don't want to use it. But there's decks now. Mine's one of them that loves attack from the sea and loves storming the shore and Gorold. And our weakest matchup was Burn, and influence-based stuff, Martell control, character control. Um, and this just solves so many of those issues, on top of being a fantastic new addition to Choke. Yep. Um, and it is a fantastic new addition to Choke. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and kneeling like three Pintoshis and two Reducers or something, unreal, man. Forget about it. Unreal. So, A plus on this one. This is a 10 out of 10 This also works me. well with uh, Scaling Ladder. It totally works well with Scaling Ladder. Captain of the Iron Fleet. Uh, there's, there's just really good stuff yeah. here. Choice card, really Greyjoy good stuff right here. So Greyjoy also making out like bandits. Thank you. Or raiders. <coughs> thank you, fantasy yeah, yeah, Thank you, thank you. All right, next up we have yeah. the two cost Ashmark Knight uh, for Lannister, of course. Two strength military power icon Bannerman Knight. Reading any phase, discard a card from your hand to draw one card. Pretty interesting. What do you think, Lannister <coughs> player? Uh, I think this is just another form of utilitarian card draw for Lannister. It's definitely not what you want in terms of your go-to for card draw, but the more effects that Lannister can pool from to get their card draw, the better. It's also got two really solid traits, I feel, Knight and Bannerman. Yeah, sadly their Bannerman I don't feel are as viable or potent yeah, as other houses. Uh, I, I Not yet. <laughs> this is this goes a long way. They had yet to receive their <coughs> cheap, non-unique Bannermen, so this maybe will change that, but still, the other Bannermen we do have, they're kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like uh, re-icing the cake, so to speak, in terms of what they're doing for us. Um, but I think he's great. Uh, there's there's no complaints here, especially because he's not an ally. Helps I, out the Lenny Knights build. That's true. Of course. 
Yeah, I mean, if assuming you have the draw cap to do it, uh, being able to basically trade out cards in your hand, discard something you don't really need or something you can't afford, to potentially draw the answer. Yeah. Uh, can you gotta can get what you gotta get game. sometimes. You gotta mm-hmm. get it. Wait, isn't there that? What's the new dude that just came out when a card is discarded from a player's hand? Did oh, he do something? That's um, he stands. Uh, that's what is his name? Uh, I feel Janos. Like, I feel like that's pretty solid. Slint or whatever. I mean, you anything that's now you have a go-to. Uh, if a card is discarded from a player's hand, mm-hmm. guy. So mm-hmm. like those effects that come out in the future can really. And yeah, that that is the the main thing in my mind for this particular guy is Lannister seems to be quickly evolving into this discard from your own hand type of house. Uh, this this character, Ashen Mark itself, and there's some others, but uh, just discarding their own cards to do whatever effects, and, and then of course with Klansmen, uh, that's an interesting option. And yeah. that is true wealth. <laughs> it's true. When you can I just discard so your own things and it's like, let's try again. <laughs> I have more cards. <laughs> what is <clears throat> a weekend? All right, up next, <sighs> we have a zero cost for Gregor's dog. It's uh, another Lannister card. Zero strength, military intrigue, mercenary. Response after a card is discarded from any player's hand. It is. Sir Gregor's dog gets plus one strength until the end of the phase. All right. Zero what were we cost. talking about? Hey, Tunnels, this card's for you. Hey, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, that's just what Lannister needs is a, a three zero, zero cost. Unique. Yeah. unique. Unbelievable, man. Sweet. Uh, but then more. again, yeah, after a card is discarded, um, any player's hand. It's just one of those things. You can do this yourself as a Lannister player, but, of course, they're the kings of intrigue, so they're going to be doing it for you. Uh, outside of Tunnels, do you see this working in Power Behind the Throne at all? Uh... Not as much, uh, because he'll be at zero strength until after the first challenge, uh, when something's discarded. Um, I don't know. Uh, he, he, first and foremost, in my mind, was Tunnels. Uh, the trait is okay, it's not as bad as Ally, but Mercenary isn't safe either, really. Uh, there are reasons to appreciate this card, but I think just as many to not. Sure. Uh, it's by zero cost. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's appropriate in a very <coughs> uh, specific deck that is designed to handle him, but I think that there are better choices. I'd much rather run like a uh, uh, Bronze Hireling or any of the other uh, Lannister weenies with keywords or something like that as opposed to this guy. That's fair. Zero cost. It's true. Zero cost. <laughs> Do you guys know it's zero cost? <laughs> zero cost. Ever since the refugees got restricted, we're like, <laughs> zero cost? Zero. What? It's a character? Are you kidding me? I can play this? <laughs> I can set him up <laughs> for <free>. nothing. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Harry the Riverlands. Uh, House Lannister only. Any phase. <sighs> Meal any number of characters with combined printing costs three or lower. See a hungry mob. <laughs> gotcha. Hungry the, mob has been on the, the rise those, recently. I don't those know. Those pesky Stark players and their pesky hunger hungry mobs. It's like get out of here. <laughs> You're not doing anything this turn. But I hate Neil. This is this is crazy. I think it's very good. Uh, I would caveat that with not anywhere nearly as good as uh, that Baratheon force march, but. Uh, this is this is tip top. It replaces a lot of stuff that Lannister would have <clears throat> considered running in its place, like distraction or certainly other awful cards like. What about kill the wrong dwarf? That's such a key. Yeah, card, the the thing with kill the wrong dwarf is that it can be to your benefit uh, on certain occasions. Like, oh, let me kneel my own guy for the win and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, true. Uh, and it's not limited by the three costs, at least. Exactly, <clears throat> uh, but it, it's great. It's another option, and that's kind of I think the realm we're heading into now with. Game of Thrones, it's like, oh, here's some things that do a similar effect from what you've already seen, but now you get to choose between them, and that's really that's where good. it's nice. I mean, How about this in Melee, by the way? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, like, who wants out. to make a deal? Yeah. I, mean, I don't meals these six characters. The <laughs> interesting part of this is the, the non-limit on number of characters. So, mm-hmm. you know, you have those... Uh, most decks have zero and one cost characters in them, and you have those games where you have a lot of those out. And I'm just picturing, like, if uh, the... Refugees weren't restricted. Like yep. How much more crazy this card oh, would be. Yeah, snap. Yeah. And the same with the other card, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, being able to stand where it's just like, but I'm, you could easily need four or five people with this one card. Which yeah. Is especially especially in melee. melee. Yeah. Yeah. And think about the great <coughs> one in melee too. It's like you know, three. Well, everybody's running the streets. All those zeros. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all that's the, so all good the, in melee. All the streets, all the reducers. Yeah, it's a, it's quite a card in melee. <laughs> so this is good. Um, it's not, it's not the best Lannister event I've ever seen, but it's certainly <laughs> noteworthy. So in melee, it kneels every zero cost. Oh yeah, 
Easy. And then three gold. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. What a, <laughs> it just clicked for Zach. Yeah, what yeah, a like, great, negative uh, play card. Great right? choice setting the terms in future melees. Man, <clears throat> better watch out. Why didn't Target one? <laughs> Wah, wah. Uh, well, moving on to Obara San, looking good actually. I like this art for her. It it seems they've never seemed um, as deserty as they should to me. Mm -hmm. Martels in some of the, this art, and this is definitely doing it for me. That ruggedness. Yeah, three cost, um, three strength, two icons, military power. She's a sand snake and a bastard, and she does have the war crest. That's important because I think the Martel war crest idea is a cool one. Mm -hmm. I like to see it. Um, and she gets plus two strength and gains renown when she's attacking a player who controls more characters than you. Um, I think this is really strong. <coughs> I, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe there's an Obara that really compares to this on on the sc scale of like, well, this other Obara is just way better than this, so I'm going to run her instead. <laughs> But like I've never, I've I haven't really toured with Martel much, but I've played against plenty. I've never seen an Obara Sand that was just like, oh, get her off the table. But this one is pretty solid. Five strength renown. Whenever you're doing what Martel typically finds themselves in, anyway, yeah. at least every game that I played, it's like I've got six characters to your two, and Rip somehow you're friends. still winning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so it fits right into that that theme. It speeds up the aggressive decks. It gives the Red Viper and friends kind of stuff even more power and uh pretty solid gives a nice little aggro yeah a good little martel aggro thing you know where it's like <laughs> i'm aggro without flooding the board i think that's a cool theme to explore that's a great quote additionally on this Ooh, give me back my spear uncle cersei sent us ahead we should send her back a bag of them yeah she's great. not happy she's uh she's gonna <laughs> be making friends she is not happy <laughs> so there's a bar i think that's solid. And another sand snake important mm -hmm. another sand snake uh traded thing which is really nice that's what you want for that janky, <laughs> janky. Uh, well, I, I play don't have any use for green either. There they all go. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, that, that event does what again? <laughs> I, I mean, three cost for a three strength, two icon war crested character. It's a good deal. It's I'll already take good. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But take then it. it's like, eh, if you have more characters than me, now I'm five strength. And <clears> like, that, five strength is a lot. That card is going to get played. It's, but <clears> there's already a deck that wants to have fewer characters, characters anyway. Lots of characters that trigger off that. Uh, you, I'm picturing like March to the Wall turn. You should have five strength. <laughs> yep. Or not March to the Wall. Uh, to the Spears. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> having the same problem. You just <laughs> this and Red Viper, and you just go like, into go into town with it. Yeah, it's you're done. Like, That's it. Yeah. Great card. All right. Next up, we have this is zero cost. Doran's favor for Martell. It's an attachment, and it's favor traded. Uh, that's new uh, for the cycle. Set up attached to a character you control, and then it reads discard attached character. Discard attached character from play cannot be saved when you kneel Doran's favor to pay an influence cost, and it, of course, provides four influence. That's crazy. That's really interesting, man. Yeah, it is. Instant I'm, bleeds, you know. I'm picturing this out of Targaryen uh, with Slaver's Bay, reducing it to free, uh, putting on like a Mr. Nay that can't be discarded. Mm -hmm. What? What? Think about that. Wow, is that a thing? I mean, we can not? do that. I mean, yeah. Targ also has the event that break uh, this we got game. a couple packs. <laughs> <laughs> Targ got an event a couple packs ago <laughs> called uh, Fire and Blood. Yeah, uh, you play it plus two strength, I think, but then you attach it as a boon. Mm. Character can't be discarded, so they Boom. also have a way to make things undiscardable. Gross. So it does seem pretty good in, in Targ, even for the Martells. I mean, they have so many chuds they do not care about whatsoever. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've seen Martell players just throw them away, man. <laughs> I go, this guy drew me some cards. Oh. All right, he's out Okay, bye, Paramore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and I think having a bleeds threat at all times is pretty impressive um, and a bit scary. Four is a lot. Have we ever seen a card providing this much influence before? I don't think so. Red keeps at three. I I haven't. Yeah. And I, you can get that old uh, hey, Greyjoy we, guy drowned, working. The, the drowned dude. Yeah. Hey, oh, my gosh. We're halfway there. <laughs> we're so close now. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make that deck. In the challenges phase, guys. <laughs> 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 I'm out of here. <laughs> Can you imagine? Man, that, it would be a grand calling. That too. one You'd time. have to discard two characters and the, the holy dude to end the challenges it'd, phase. It'd be worth it. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure somebody has a camera on hand to kind of record that. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> now, I don't... I mean, I don't think this is... I don't know. Are, there's shenanigans here. Oh, man. You know what else is good out of Tar? What's that? Dragons only cost four? No. <laughs> that's a good reason. <laughs> Lady Dan Chambers. Yep. Yuck. Yeah. <sighs> 
Why? That wasn't a target it attachment, it, was it? It gets target attachments. Does it? Yeah. I think so. I thought it had to be a target character that you play. Even, no, even it doesn't get target attachments because you get ravens back. You're right. You've been house of dreaming it for a while. Yeah, you have yeah, to play a target character. <laughs> you have to play a target character, but you get a, uh, a new attachment, attachment back. Yep. Okay, well, this was game. <laughs> so even if the character does get destroyed. Driving me nuts. Do it again? You pay two money for That's not, I mean, again, though, I feel like Martell did not do the best here. No. But it's not bad either. It's not bad, no. It's not bad. Oh, hey, we're not done. Martel's not done. They got one more. Ooh, we're not done Wait yet. Wait for okay. it. <laughs> oh, Who's okay. Guys? That's not you. Me. It's me? It's all you. Uh, up next, we have <laughs> Prepare for War. It's a House Martel only event. Any phase, choose any number of influence providing cards with combined print that costs three or lower. Kneel all chosen cards or stand all chosen cards. I love this event. Hello, Martel. I love they it. They are the influence kings now. I love this. That, that is, is amazing. So awful. Oh man! It's like oh, you cancel my bleeds. Stand. <laughs> bleeds. Yeah, it's, the <laughs> thing. The thing that this does to me is like, if I kneel out influence, I expect no red vengeance. Mm -hmm. I expect no uh, prince's wrath. None of that craziness. It's like okay, things are safe now, and I can just move forward. Jeez. It's like now I'll just stand it all, and then yeah, boom, do it again. Boom! Red vengeance, or like boom, bleeds. Here it is. It's it's really solid. I think this is a cool. I'm just card. picturing like you attack right into a. No, even if you didn't kneel them out, they just played all their influence out. Yeah. And you attack thinking they can't red vengeance. <sighs> and then they're like, oh, I'm an unopposed. And I got it. I'm going to raise a claim. And they're like, okay, that's cool. I'm going to stay in my influence and red vengeance you. Eventually, everybody's just going to run 30 events in their decks. I mean, these things are too much fun at this point. <clears throat> like this, this card right here. Very woo. cool. Very cool. I love it. So, yeah, I, I do. You know what? I would. If, if any house is going to really claim influence, I'm okay with it being Martel. Take it away from Targ, though. Please. They don't need that ambush yeah. nonsense. I'm, I don't. mean, obviously, we're, we're not serious. They, <laughs> they probably do need at least some ambush <laughs> nonsense, or they I'm would serious. just be horrible. <laughs> uh, but I do. That's good Martel flavor. They're influential in, they the, in the desert. Mm. It's a hand. Bloody hands. <laughs> Bloody hands. <laughs> it's what uh, I'm into. Next up. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have a card we actually previewed a couple weeks back. Uh, Rob Stark, four cost unique Stark character. He's a lord, three strength, military power, renown, war press, response. After you win a challenge in which Rob Stark participated, choose and kill a character with a higher strength than its printed cost. Cannot be saved. Moida, Moida. Yeah, you've really seen good. this used to really great effect. Mm -hmm. um, Sean, Sean's uh, around here murder deck was awesome. I think Alex had a version of it too, especially that winter cash, man. Everybody who's not looking at Winter Cash has got to be looking at. It. I mean, I, I, it's not breaking any secrets, right? I'm yeah. not spoiling like Sean's deck or anything. It's like, hey, don't tell him about that thing that plus one strength stuff, <laughs> and then stays on the board forever. Yeah. It's like this makes Rob insane. Mm -hmm. It makes Rob insane. It makes Rob insane. <laughs> really scary. <laughs> Market eight, dude. Uh, he's great. I mean, we've already more or less talked about him. He's yeah. great if you're if you're running him. If you're into good cards, yeah. you know, this one's for you. On top of it all, he's got the word. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, bye Renown. No quarter. No quarter. Renown. He's a great value. Totally. Maybe. Some of the best art. art. Yep. Yeah. Really good. Magali. King of Strikes Autumn. again. She's the best. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on to Harwin, shall we? Awesome. I, mean, I love two cost uniques, by the way. It's like my thing. <laughs> number one. You love Stark, then. Number one coolest thing in this game is two cost uniques because it's always the guys that you don't really know much about but are probably doing something cool in the world. Um, and he's a brotherhood dude. Two cost, uh, two strength, military power. While any opponent's house card has more power than your house card. Harwin gains response after you win a military challenge. Search your deck for a card, shuffle your deck, and put that card on the top of your deck. And I think that is just phenomenal. It's pretty good. We've not seen a level of tutor like that. It's worth noting that you can, with this card, have Blackfish on the table. Oh, no. Win a military challenge. Search your deck for a no quarter. Put it on top. Draw a card from Black Blackfish, Blackfish and then play it. And then play it. Yep. Yuck. Oh baby. <laughs> oh baby! Oh baby! That feels good. Why is Tim all of a sudden know all the combos for the pack? He's a Stark player, man. He knew it earlier on uh, the. I seen this at a at a targ. <laughs> you've, been doing some, you've been doing some late night studying over there. No. <laughs> yes. Maybe. That's uh, awesome. Out. And but, of uh, course, awesome. And then on top of all that, like it's just a tutor. Like I can go get whatever I want. And he's, if he's in a brotherhood. I mean, if he's doing Stark brotherhood, or even. No, he slots into any deck. Like I mean, two, two cards for a two strength bike on. I'd run one of those. <clears throat> I wonder if you even. I think he even goes into Brotherhood decks that are not Stark at all. Hmm. At all. At all. Yeah, four costs for that. I. That's such a strong effect. It is a pretty oh strong effect. Oh my gosh. But, well, yeah, in Brotherhood, it's crazy. <laughs> Watch crazy. out. Well, crazy. Yes, it always works. 
All right. <laughs> Next up, we have the one cost unique Griffin's Roost for Targaryen. Uh, Beautiful. It's a location, mm. Stronghold, and Stormlands traded, House Targaryen only. While any opponent's house card has more power than your house card, raise the claim value on your revealed plot card by one during power challenges. It's beautiful. Holy sweet lord, this is great. Melee Targaryen. jumps out to me here. Yeah. Because it's any opponent. Mm hmm. This is a huge melee <clears throat> card. I, I think this it's is good fantastic. in Joust as well, though. Like. It's one of those things that like I get to like six or seven power and you're at way ahead. Like, you're at oh. way ahead. <laughs> yeah, I drop this. It's like okay, claim three power challenge coming at you. Like I did not see that coming. Surprise! The power challenge is such a fickle mistress, really, because it can be oh so useless. Yeah. Early on, and then it can be oh so important at the last turn. Yeah. yeah. Just win this power challenge. Uh, I think uh, in, uh, in Targ though, the interesting part of this card, like when you consider. Can't think of the name of the event we got last pack. Uh, Neil two tar characters are in power challenge to kill all the opposing characters. Um, you have that now? Yep. Yeah. What? We got the. I knew Lanny got yours and. We haven't got ours yet. Oh, next you pack. Yeah. that's why. Okay. So Tar got the power version of it. Oh, wow. Um, anyways, Watch so out. they have a lot of power challenge related cards and uh, being able to raise the claim on those, I, I'm. My often. You can run the Iron Throne. Throne. My yep. often Air to the Iron Throne deck that just. You can run it now. It's a potential card. It's not going to be. It's a unique location, so you're not I mean, going to try to move. But like, definitely oh. one or two of them. Have you deck. drawn to that? It's like it's worth it. I mean, there's got to be a weird Air of the Iron Throne deck that just hangs out for two or three turns and then just turns it on. <laughs> yeah, that's, all that's the power. most has yeah. the Iron Throne deck. So yeah. Rocky guys, they have to have power for you to matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you just kind of have to be like, uh, you got to rope a dope, him, man. <laughs> rope a dope. It's pretty sweet. Classic rope a dope. It's really. It's my uh, Air of the Iron Throne. I give up military instead of giving up Inspire deck. There it is. There it is. It's coming. Watch. <laughs> it's not coming. Coming to a world's near you. Man, that would be a fun day. All right. right? Up, uh, up next, we have Daenerys Favor. <laughs> Zero cost Targ Favor attachment. It's uh, You attach to a character you control. Attached what? character gets plus three strength, gains the banishment trait, and gains a military, and intrigue, and a power icon. After you use a power challenge, discard attached character from play. Cannot be saved. I don't think it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just kidding. That card's awesome. Zero cost attachment. Uh, uh, Dance Chambers deck. You're gonna recur it. It gives you Tricon. It gives you plus three strength. Um, gives you Bannerman. This is an escalation. I mean, Bannerman is a. What are we supposed a, to do with this? It's fine. It's, <laughs> but if the Bannerman character we got was significant, then yeah. But um, I mean, that this is useful in a multitude of of decks. It's it's worth noting. This non house target only. Yep. You could pay. Uh, you could pay two for it. For yeah, you could. Places. Tricon plus three strength. Ooh, baby, that's solid, man. You I mean, can already put it on your non-discardable. Uh, what is it, Melisi or whatever? The quality of Ms. attachments. Miss Andy. Andy. That's what I'm saying. Quality of attachments has gone up mm -hmm. recently. Yeah, it used to really be you didn't has. run them, but now yeah. it's like, how can you not yeah. put that on a Ranger of Winter? Whew. That's a really solid card there. Yeah, just gonna it's, say it. It's Watch great. out, and uh, I don't mind the art. It's not game breaking, but. It's good. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> That's, I always say that, and then it's like two months later, game-breaking game Game is emerges. broken. <laughs> Thanks, Steven. <Let's> <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> list of cards. You said it was a good breaking game. Cards noted not to break <laughs> the game by Steven. <laughs> also known as the restricted list. <laughs> All right, next up, we have household favorite, Jindry. He's a one-cost unique, uh, non-house-affiliated brotherhood. Gendry? 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 I think uh, Arya says Gendry in the show. I'll yeah. say Gendry. It's a cool helmet. Uh, he does have a cool helmet. Brotherhood, ally, bastard, uh, one strength, military power icon. While any opponent's house card has more power than your house card, Gendry gains response. <laughs> After you win a challenge in which Gendry participated, we won a power from the OVC player's house card to Gendry. Yeah, yeah that's fair enough. I mean, I'm gonna pronounce it Gendry. <laughs> Gendry. <laughs> he's, he's a neutral brotherhood guy, you know. Uh, he's not. He's not. He's not. Now, like he is not fire. breaking the game. No, he is guy, not. He's, he's an ally, man. I th There's I no think way. He's <laughs> one of the brotherhood. Deck, yeah, though. he is. He's absolutely <coughs> one of the brotherhood. He's kind of like he adds to the roster, kind of how like you know, if you're in six kins or something, slots into a wildling deck. He just he's a decent unique that you put in there because he's got the trait, and his effect is actually quite good. It's Speeds up the Brotherhood. If you remember to trigger it. If you remember <clears throat> to trigger it. If Zach. you remember. I don't know. Apparently. I mean, <laughs> you were being with you've, you've had some problems. 
<laughs> um, let's move on to the two cost Lady of the Leaves. Let's do it. Ooh, she looks leafy. Interesting there. And uh, she's unique. She got two strength, an intrigue, and a power icon. She has Brotherhood as well and immune to events. And while an opponent's house card has more power than your house card, she gains any phase. Kneel her to choose a character until the end of the phase. Treat that character as if it's printed text box. We're blank. We like blanking. This for yeah. the end of man, too, right? blanking. This is, yeah, it does. And I think this is really, really solid. Talk about giving us some tools to Brotherhood. Blanking effects like this, like mirror level blanking effects, is pretty significant, honestly. And you can blank your own stuff, let's not forget. So if there's some so negativity good. going on there. Blank uh, that influence before you get bled. <laughs> blank. Blank, blank, blank. Blank, 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 blank. blank, blank. <clears throat> All the blanks of character. And nightmares and some leaves. Blank some. So, man, this is a good little control element to Brotherhood decks. And they are a force right now. Yeah. I'm convinced after seeing this pack. Don't you think so? I think so. Yeah, all the. Uh, <clears throat> if they have I mean, more they power were already on their house card stuffs going on. I think it was already a deck. Top four at Stalich <clears throat> was actually a Martel Brotherhood. Really? Yeah. Well. Yeah, it was like a super barrack with the snake skin <coughs> mail and mm. the whole shebang, you know, that we've no seen. No one regretted them? But what's that? No one regretted them? Uh -huh. I don't. I think it was before. <laughs> gotcha. Egret. Um, mm -hmm. But it was, yeah, it's like you either have nightmares and you probably win or you don't. Like in that, in that kind of a matchup, it's so, so That was scary. the lesson from our regional. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Blank him and Valor, man. Either have nightmares or go home. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Lady Leaves, huge. This Pretty is actually solid. this yeah. is going to be a bigger deal than I think even I giving it credit. <laughs> so it, it, it could be it could be a game breaker, maybe. I, I mean, don't I don't <laughs> think breaker. It could cause some game serious bender. issues. <laughs> it's a game bender. It can make Brotherhood it's pretty like significant. And and let's not forget that she does not have to be playing a Brotherhood deck to get that effect. If you're playing a slower deck, a more controlly deck, of course you're going to run her and blank. A character every Sounds turn. Pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah, I'm. Uh, is, is it enemy character? Can it be your own? Right? It can be your yeah, own. Yeah, it can be your own. Yeah. Uh, picture it with that. Choose a character. Let me know if this works. So the Baratheon character that was the first card in the pack, the knight. Yes. Could you use that on him during dominance so he doesn't get discarded? Oh man, see the reason that question is so weird. The, it's it only lasting effect. The end of phase. <laughs> okay, got it. We're there. And the end of he phase. Would still get discarded. Is end of phase. Yeah. yeah. It would still get discarded. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, this game. All, <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, moving on. All right, moving on. We have a noble cause. It's an agenda. Hardly. House Baratheon only. It's more like a janky cause. Um, you draw <laughs> one less card during the draw phase to a minimum of one. Uh, and then your Baratheon characters with printed cost two or higher gain renown. I mean, renown. Let's, let's clarify something, though. You said it more like a janky cause. This is probably the least janky thing that I've ever seen. <laughs> this is just straight up, you're drawing one less card and giving all your dudes renown. So it's pretty straightforward. And is it good? But out of Baratheon? <laughs> we are talking about Baratheon, right? I it's think that Baratheon it's only. good. <laughs> it's very good. I think it's good. Yeah. I, I mean, think that Control can own it. It's not going to go away. The, this it's takes, a rush deck. Like. It, yeah, this is that kind of standard templated deck that we've seen out of Baratheon for a long time, and it has the potential to win first turn. But this gives it the kind of rock solid certainty to win first yeah. turn. Yeah. Either you stop it on turn one or you don't. Yeah. Uh, Matt Phillips, a player in Tulsa, built a deck on this, and I lost a lot on turn one too. <laughs> but if well, you don't lose turn one, you're you probably make okay. it pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I think. Uh, well, we won't talk about that about upcoming things. But yeah. there, there are cards coming for Baratheon that will make <laughs> this card. Even more bananas than it already is. I think there are ways to give these decks staying power, too. Let's not forget that Val Laughing Storm is still in House Baratheon. It's true. And That's so what I said. As soon as I saw this, I Drawing like, one less card. Oh, my. I draw three or four <laughs> cards for the deck instead of five. Sometimes yeah, it doesn't matter. That's no big Whoa. deal. Um, uh, so, it, weird. I still hit draw cap. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> um, I, given all you guys' renown, I mean, huge rush potential here. It's this just, is also screams to me melee right mm -hmm. like <clears throat> control yeah. is fine but control is way less of a deal in melee because you can't control everybody oh wait i already won sorry yeah sorry <laughs> and obviously obviously power of faith here everyone's yeah we're, everyone's yeah. A fool there. we're, that's, we're hip Baratheon was already doing that now they we're just hip. do it with a little more renown <laughs> with a little more a lot more renown a lot yes. more a lot yeah. more renown actually yeah. and it's scary i'm going to tell you have you played against the noble cause deck at all no yeah you got a chance mm -hmm. to it's it is scary. it's scary it's really scary because like it's like, all right, I'm going to initiate a you know, first turn power challenge. You're like, ah, whatever, go ahead. And then it's like... But then again, I'm dink, not a Potoshi Dink, 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 so. dink. It's like, you just got seven power, dude. <laughs> oh, 
Hey, Settle I down. Mean, I said like, unopposed, but you, I didn't mean claim or you nap. You've got to play it <laughs> so close to yeah. the hip the whole time. Yeah, you have to count like, every single power dude, they're okay, about to Okay, so gain. he's at 12 power. I don't need to – I can't Valor yet. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to hold it for the next turn. And so it's like I've got to defend every challenge. I've got to put these many – it's scary. It's really scary. You can't yeah. give anything unopposed to this deck. Nothing goes unopposed. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and if you do that, you're probably me. okay. Burn them all. All right. Um, up next, we have the old way. It's another agenda. Uh, another agenda. That's it's a good way for uh, House Greyjoy only. It's the first. After a challenge the resolves, the right. player who counted the lowest Thank total you. strength must choose and kill a participating character he or she controls. Oh, it's so good. I mean, you think that. <laughs> you really do think that. Uh, well, I don't know. Some of us think that. It's shiny. It I, is that. I at least think it's ridiculously no, fun. I, I ultimately agree with you. And it came down to what we were talking about the other day, is that this more or less incentivizes the defender to let things go unopposed, but Greyjoy doesn't have the muscle for unopposed effects. They, they just need more. Like Again, it's kind of like I was talking about with location control. is. You associate Greyjoy with unopposed challenges because they have a few cards that specifically say unopposed challenges. And no one challenges, else does, yeah. <laughs> but they don't really have the impact that you want them to have. Like Rise of the Kraken is the biggest one, and that is a huge rush, but it's a 1 8 2. So mm -hmm. you have to be in position to play that, or your board just gets overtaken because you're not getting any gold. Um, you know, you got support of Harlaw, is a, is a great attachment for this. You've got like the Knight that stands up on unopposed challenges. Um, you've even got Naga's Hill, which mm -hmm. can be a fun little thing, but they're. None of them are like Wintertime Marauders style, if this is unopposed, bad things are Supplements happening. Supplements rather than I mean? like game winners. Yeah. yeah. And like Hammerhorn, like the claim raising with Hammerhorn and Assault of the Kraken and stuff, that really adds to this being a thing. But inevitably it falls into the exact same problem that Greyjoy has always fallen into, right? Your deck is going to be more or less the same with the yeah. old way. Uh, you're going to try to get unopposed. Do you... You don't really want stealth because you're wanting to incentivize them to not defend because you're running this agenda. Um... And you're just going to get controlled, or you're going to get Ballard, or they're just not going to oppose, and it's like, okay, they didn't oppose. Okay, you get an extra power, and now they're challenging you back, and yeah. it's just a normal game. So, Except for the negative also works for you. The negative also works for you, and that is key. That's a big problem. And, and I will say, of the surprising strength pumps in the game, Greyjoy doesn't have a lot of them. Like the surprise ones, oh, they yeah. have the naval escorts out, and so it's like, yeah. okay, yeah, I'm not gonna oppose because if you do that, then you'll I'll have to kill my dude. But like against like Lannister or something, you're playing the old way, and it's like, haha, plus two strength, and you're like, dude, there goes Balin, you know? It's like you, so there's some serious. That problems. would be hysterical. <laughs> there's, oh man, talk about the old way. Yeah, I'll have to like do this next time somebody plays the um, old way against me. There's some serious problems, but honestly, I think if you want to look at this agenda, you really should look at it on the defensive side of things. Mm -hmm. You should look at it as a slower, controlling so Greyjoy deck that stands back wins on defense or ch or just basically goes second every time and it's like do you want to challenge me because i know that i can defend with enough strength to kill one of your participating dudes mm -hmm. and so it be becomes this kind of weird thing that you're trying to sort out turn into um, like an attrition game or something. yeah so there could be a yeah. great joy deck there you've got the saves i tried to build an old way <laughs> deck and you know i was i was about 80 percent done and it was just like this is not going to work like it was one of those decks you put together and you you're like i know this is not going to work yeah like, i just know it so well, that's what I was going to ask about the defensive side of it because, you know, I find myself a lot of time I'll attack with a one strength intrigue or a two strength or a two strength military just to force you to block. And if this is on the table, I can't do that anymore. Yep. Uh, and I also think the interesting part of it is kill affects you a decent bit less mm -hmm. because you do have saves. Yes. Um, or at least are known for saves. You may not have in the deck, but you should. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, like, you know, you can do the intrigue and. <clears throat> They can block it if they want, and then maybe they can block it with three characters and kill one of your dudes. But it's not going to be as big of a deal to you yeah. as it is to them. And yeah, not as big of a deal. Yeah, it's. I think the the highest penalty of this agenda is the fact that it's your agenda. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like, like putting totally. That. Yeah, like it's it's not yeah. that it, the effect isn't potentially interesting. You can build a deck to do it, but at the same time, it's like what agendas are you giving up? to use this instead. Or right. what benefits am I giving my opponent because I am running an agenda? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I feel like it kind of falls in the same place that the discarding theme does for Greyjoy. It's mm -hmm. like, I keep getting a lot of ways to discard cards of an opponent's deck, but not enough reasons to do it. Yeah. And it's like the same way, I keep getting a lot of ways to get onto post challenges, but aside from a couple extra power, like I'm what, not seeing a reason yeah. to really go for it. So, 
You know, like if you have Hammerhorn Raiders just came out, raise the claim by one if you have more strength in the challenge. <coughs> if you have some non-uniques and stuff, it's like, if it's unopposed, raise the claim by one. If it's unopposed, draw a card. Yeah. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And the, re the reader does have the unopposed thing, but that's about all that we are looking at right now. So I think this will come along, and I think we will come back to this, and there will be decks here. Um, but right now, I don't think it's the, in the top tier of Greyjoy decks. Yeah, for sure. I could That's be fair. wrong, though. <coughs> Prove me wrong. Mark All right, and the last card in the pack is oh, the Red God. Wine Straits. This thing. Four gold, zero initiative, one <sighs> The claim. Rant Wine Straits. <laughs> it's a river. Wah. It's a river. Ha-ha. <laughs> when revealed, the player with the fewest <coughs> cards at his or her command adds four gold to his or her gold pool. First off, art is phenomenal. Yep. Before I even talk about the card. <clears throat> Great Agreed. art. It's just beautiful. Look at that thing. <clears throat> so okay. who's, are you going to say that? Who's... Rant first, Who's Zach. Gonna rant? It's your card. Well, he's in, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> tag. For anyone that knows me, uh, they know that I'm a huge target game player, and I play a lot of Nice Hollow Hill, have since I began. <laughs> this card fits with Hollow Hill like Bada. crazy. Like, um, as an really opening good. plot, it pretty much guarantees I have a 10 gold plot. Um, That's just turn gross. one. Nobody. Pretty much making up for setup, except for the fact that I don't get to draw more cards or have an economy out. Which is traditionally the, the uh, weakness of Hollow Hill. Mm. It's yeah. the card, card advantage, card hand size. That's the only way to win against those decks, usually, is to kill their hand. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so so uh, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic plot for Hollow Hill. Um, obviously, in a Hollow Hill versus Hollow Hill matchup, it gets interesting. Um, but Becomes a normal plot at that point. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean I think it's a phenomenal plot. I think it's it it does work. Uh, it could backfire on you technically if you are playing Hollow Hill and you don't get to play it till later. And there is a lot of Hollow Hill mm -hmm. uh, that gets played. So I would definitely want to run a second backup opening if this was my opening. But yeah, I think it's anytime you have that much gold on the board, it's you can it's also crazy. run a Ripper and duplicate this effect. Yep. Yeah, and a standard you know a standard River plot. Type deck might actually you, you might run it's like coming a into its own now with red wine straits kind of plus another river of your choice and mm. you kind of have some adds two gold there you go yeah, yeah I think the one. I don't know I feel like I, I'm happy I, I like rivers getting a really good plot mm -hmm. uh, I said I've said for a long time they all all rivers need are one or two really good plots and it makes every other river mm -hmm. that's right immediately better so Shoot the cities uh, yeah I don't know I, I think it's a, a solid plot zero initiative I think is the right call there. And uh, I've, you know, I played a lot with Rally Cry, especially going into Worlds. It was in my plot deck, and it made me really leery of this less commands thing, less cards at command thing, um, because there were so many times where I literally was on my seventh plot and just had to nuke something of mine with that thing because what? I just, I was winning, and it's like. I played a couple of plots <laughs> to get to winning, Oops. and now it's like, <laughs> oh wow, now I can't like yeah. play this thing, and so. You will find yourself in situations, I, I don't know, I, it's kind of hard for me to plan a plot deck around I'm going to be in a worse situation than my opponent, and so I need to, I'm going to play this, you know. Yeah. Um, What's your Martell? So yeah, Hollow Hill makes a lot of sense. I think Martell, it, it makes a lot of sense in a Martell style deck. Yeah. Um, and the rest <laughs> of the houses, I don't know, you just kind of have to play and see and yeah. see where your deck tends to lie. Yeah, I think, you know, excluding the Hollow Hill conversation, it's a... I mean, huge effect, but also could be a huge downside uh, if things don't go your way, and could be a, a really dead plot. Yeah. But in Hollow Hill, it's only mostly yeah. dead. If 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 Hollow Hill, I mean, you still get four gold. You're giving them four gold, and if it's late game, they may or may not have cards in their hand. That a lot of times in those turns, they'll have five gold anyway, and their economy set up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Um, so I don't know. I think it's a. I think in general, it's a good plot. I think in, it will see play. I think Hollow Hill opens a lot, and. Uh, Prepare, Ten gold open. Prepare though. for it's the red wine straights, baby. You think about that. Ten gold. It's, it's a just huge like... amount of money. First turn. I mean, I don't care how many cards you didn't get in setup. That is a lot of money. So in, in my my you turn, just blaring out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll pay for this one straight up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, in my uh, in my current target color, <laughs> I I run City of Lies as my opening typically, or as one of my openings. And that ends up being a nine gold plot. Technically. If you have two shadows, if I have two cards to put in shadows, it's it's worth nine gold on that turn. Gross. So they already have. I mean, that agenda man. Hollow Hill already has a powerful. Restricted, please. That's that's the rumor going around the Now that you're talking though. about it, I'm just like, yeah, man, no wonder you guys are winning so much. It's a different video. Yeah, yeah it is a different video. Yeah, it's it's strong. It's it's 
I'm not. I mean, it's that's why I, I started playing it really early because the dragon giving the economy and awesome. initiative yeah. and influence and every turn, giving them a huge I, advantage. I weird. I'm winning the game. The, the, <laughs> part of Hollow Hill is the fundamentals are strong. In, in Targ, a lot of times, influence is almost gold. Oh yeah. So. It almost? Was, almost? It might be better. <laughs> it might be better than gold. Yeah, it's like, better. It is, it is better than gold, but I mean, it's like it's almost spendable as gold. I feel like, like it's, it's more spendable than gold. Yes. What I'm saying. Well, sometimes <laughs> not every card has an ambush, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes you uh, can't play the card. Sometimes you got nothing for influence to <laughs> yeah. work, and it doesn't even count towards dominance. Yeah. So, it, <clears throat> anyways, in targets particularly it's good. So. I'm I'm digging it. I love the red line. So straights are good. Uh, man, I feel like everyone got. Plenty to play with. Here. Yeah, this is a, a very even pack for pretty much every house. Who who, who did who, the who who lucked out? Who got the best? What's the MVP I, of this? You pack? know, I think Targ actually didn't didn't get terribly much. Danny's favor and Griffin's are. I'm not. I'm gonna give it to Baratheon. These two cards plus their agenda. You like, like that? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, Ugh. I think that's pretty strong. I think Greyjoy did it. Greyjoy exceptional. Really well. I mean, you guys all. Uh, Targ. Let's, let's, let's be honest. Good too. Tark got the short end here. It did. We can say this much. Yeah, Tark got destroyed. The short, short end. end. The short end. And they deserve a I short think end. They, <laughs> I think they and uh, Martell actually got a semi-short end. <clears throat> Which is fine. I'm okay with that. I think Stark got some good tools. Oh, they did. Fair enough. Huh? Lannister huh? was added. That Rob is a thing. It's pretty. All right, guys. Well, Happy New Year. Uh, this has been your 2014 Forgotten Fellowship uh, <laughs> update. Better Thanks. late than never. Yeah, better late than never. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to support what we're doing uh, here... Which we would love uh, for you to do. You can go ahead and buy this pack at our online store, and uh, we'll have it sent to you with a, a hugged and kissed note, probably from Robert, uh, if you're lucky. I'm just picturing maybe <laughs> from me as well. Uh, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you in more wonderful things to come in 2014.